In this lesson and in order to conclude our section on object-oriented programming in TypeScript, we're going to combine some of the things that we have learned throughout this section and we're going to introduce you to a new object-oriented design pattern that you are going to find in almost any object-oriented system. I'm talking about the singleton pattern. Imagine that you have a class in your program, such as, for example, a courses service that you use to add or remove entities of type course to the database or to update existing entities. And you would like to make sure that that class only has one instance in the whole program and not any other instance. Let's say that you have this requirement in your program that the courses service instance only has a single instance because that class takes a long time to initialize. It takes, for example, 10 seconds. It consumes a lot of resources, such as, for example, memory. So you want to make sure that that initialization is only done once. And then any part of the program that needs that class can refer to that one single instance. And this way you ensure that you only pay for the initialization cost once. So that's a typical case for wanting to create a singleton. Let's then see how can we combine the multiple object-oriented features that we have discovered so far in order to implement this design pattern. So I'm going to open here a new file and I'm going to create a new class that I'm going to call courses service. So this is going to be our singleton. So, so far, this is just a plain class. Now, in order to instantiate this class, we're going to be needing a constructor. So far, there is nothing special about this class. We could potentially use this constructor to create multiple instances of courses service, which is exactly what we want to avoid. So the first thing that is different in this class is that we are going to make this constructor private. This means that if I try to create here a new service instance by calling the constructor of courses service, we're going to get here a compilation error telling us that this is not possible and that the constructor is not accessible outside the class. So only the class itself can create instances of it. But if we cannot create an instance of the class, how are we ever going to call this constructor? Well, the only way to do that is via a static method. So we're going to create here a new static method that we're going to be calling instance. And this is the method that is going to be responsible by calling the constructor. Now we need to store our instance of courses service somewhere inside the class so that we can return it here as the output of instance. And we can store that reference here by using a static variable. So I'm going to define here a static variable called instance, which is going to be of type courses service. So far, I have not yet initialized it. I want to make sure that this instance variable is not reachable outside of the class. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it private. So now this instance variable is only reachable from inside the class. Now, the goal here of the instance method is to be called by any part of the program that needs the courses service singleton, the unique instance that we have here. So one of the things that this method has to do is to simply return the courses service instance. Let's go ahead and let's return this as the output of this method. If we would return this as it is, this value would be undefined because we have not yet initialized the instance variable. So what we're going to do here in our instance method is to do a check. We are going to start by checking if the instance is already defined. So if it's not defined yet, then we are going to initialize it by calling the constructor. So we are going to assign here to the instance static variable a new courses service that we're going to be building using the constructor. And here it's really the only place, a static method inside the courses service class where we can call this private constructor. So with this, we have checked if this instance is not yet initialized, then we are going to initialize it. This is going to happen only once in the whole life cycle of the class because 
in further calls here to instance, this condition is going to make sure that the initialization does not happen multiple times. So the courses service constructor is for sure only going to be called once. I'm going to confirm this by adding here a console.log and let's say here that the courses service was initialized. So this is how we implement a singleton in TypeScript. We get here only one instance of the class reachable via the instance method. Let's see what it would look like to use the singleton in our program. Let's go back here, for example, to our course class and let's see how do we access the courses service. Well, first of all, we need to call the courses service class. There is no point in trying to call here the constructor. We are going to get the same compilation error that we saw before. So we need to access here courses service and we need to call the instance method. Notice that we don't have access to the instance variable, only to the instance method because the instance variable is private. So here, this is how we got a reference here to the courses service that we can now use in our program. So the courses service could contain methods such as, for example, update course, delete course, create course, search courses, etc. All of those methods could be reachable here via the service instance. Notice that if in other parts of our program we call the courses service instance method again, that will not result in another initialization of the instance. So here in our program, if I call, for example, here the instance method again, then this instance method is going to return the initial instance that was already initialized. As you can see, we have here an example of a program with a couple of calls to the instance method. So let's go ahead and let's run it in our terminal. I have compiled it already. Let's run the new version. And as we can see, the course was initialized only once. So we can see that the initialization did not happen multiple times in the program, even though we have called the instance method a couple of times in separate places in the program. And with this, we have reached the end of our object-oriented programming section in our course. As you can see, all the typical object-oriented features of many programming languages are also present in TypeScript. We have all the same concepts, abstract classes, inheritance, multiple interfaces, everything is in here. Usually, I try to write my programs as much as possible around the notion of plain functions instead of classes because I feel that we can do everything with functions. There is nothing that we can do with classes that we cannot do with plain functions. So I just happen to personally prefer plain functions because I find them easier to understand and maintain. But you still need to know object-oriented programming because some important frameworks and libraries such as for example Angular still use some parts of it. So it's still very important to be familiar with all the concepts covered in this section. Now let's go on with our next section of the course. We are going to be talking about generics.